Over the last few days, I was revisiting a few books that I really enjoy. Number one is Thought Vibration by William Walker Atkinson. And number two is As a Man Thinketh by James Allen. So I combined it here and I titled the mind map Thought Vibration, As a Man Thinketh in His Heart. So one of the things that I mentioned in Tuesday's video is that I enjoy consuming the same information, repetition of the same information, as well as repetition of the same information from different perspectives. And the fundamental reason why is because we know the kind of information that we resonate with. And we know as we continue to encourage that information, identify with that information, we allow ourselves to be more of who we really are, which is what we resonate with. So what I have on the screen here is the DILT's logical levels. One of my favorite models to work with when it comes to taking this information from mind stuff and translating it over to concrete success, personal development, entrepreneurship, and so forth. So on the top, we got vision, we got identity, then we got values and beliefs, we got capabilities, behaviors, and environment. The truth is that we can allow ourselves to be stimulated by information, the same information, or the same information from different perspectives, in all of these areas, thus bringing forth a higher degree of congruence, automatic flow-based expressions in our journey, artistic endeavors, entrepreneurial innovation, day-to-day -day life, relationships. This is something that, through my own experience, is a result of a number of different perspectives that I have received on this information that we discuss and uncover. As I also begin to integrate it and understand it even more so, I started studying this stuff back in the days. I remember picking up some NLP texts in 2001, and I was reading it, and it didn't make any sense to me. Now, I have a very deep understanding on NLP or different aspects of psychology and mind. 2004, I read Think and Grow Rich. And the way the book was written was a lot more in a language that I understood, but it was the same information, just communicated from a different perspective. And one of the ideas that showed up as I was consuming the same information was when someone said, there are more people around you that you could possibly ever meet that think the way you do. Now, I had looked around in my environment at that time, and it didn't seem to show these signs. But, however, I encouraged that idea. I started to say, you know what, listen, thinking grow rich, he said, if you believe that money is a result of hard work alone, perish the thought. And I did, and I noticed that coming from a background where I would force myself to do a lot of things, I was finding a lot of interesting opportunities that I would enjoy, different ways of earning income as a result of identifying with that idea. So I said to myself, well, what if I start identifying with this idea? And it started to happen. I met someone through a networking event that I went through. You know, you would get all these inspirations as soon as you would identify with a new idea. And it'll start to open up different doors. Your behaviors change. Your environments change. So I met this individual, and him and I would talk about business. He was very successful in what he did. And one of the things about him was he was masterful at observing someone's thinking patterns and helping you see from a different perspective. What I mean by that is if you said to him, you know, I don't know if creating success was possible, he would automatically effortlessly respond with something like, well, do you know anyone that had transcended self-imposed limitations? And I would listen to what he was saying, and he would say certain things, and I listened very carefully because he said self-imposed limitations. 
my idea of creating success or bringing forth a vision or goals or whatever was a result of certain thinking patterns, past programming. And it was revealed in my communication. And so he could pick up on this and he would help me see it from a different perspective. Now, the interesting thing was he was saying the same stuff that was in Thinking Grow Rich. He was saying the same stuff that I was reading in the NLP text that at that time didn't make any sense to me. What I found is that just by encouraging the same ideas and then further meditating upon how those ideas transformed into reality and further encouraging them, I started to notice it even more so. Now, fast forward, here we are in 2022, and I'm making these videos, and at this time of recording it, we have 347 or 8,000 subscribers. And I've had many conversations with clients, business partners, people that I've met through this channel. And that one idea, that single idea of there are more people that are like me than I could possibly ever meet seems to surround me even more so. Things just seem to bloom into a full saturation where your entire environment is the same information from different perspectives. So I have conversations and I recognize that we all share the same ideas, the same philosophies, the same ways of looking at reality. And although we might say things differently, as I listen to the conversations, I notice that I understand the same ideas from a different perspective. And that's a beautiful thing about YouTube, the internet, is you have countless people talking about the same topic, the stuff that we talk about here. And they all share it from their own individualized perspective. That's why I recommend studying the same information as well as the same information from different perspectives. And then when I go back to look at this material here, like thought vibration or as a man thinketh, I start to understand it even more so. So let's weave this experience that I just shared into our conversation today. Now, James Allen said, past and future are dreams. Now is a reality. All things are now. All power, all possibility, all action is now. Not to act and accomplish now is not to act and accomplish at all. To live in thoughts of what you might have done or in dreams of what you mean to do, this is folly. But to put away regret to anchor anticipation, and to do and to work now, this is wisdom. Now, this is uh, something that I very much resonate with because I saw an inconsistency in my behavior, more so in the earlier stages, but it had showed up all throughout the years. And that is when I commit to something and say I'm going to do it, for some reason, I was having a challenge allowing myself to express and actually do it. So I said to myself, there must be a lot of opportunity here because if I can get myself to be the kind of person that when I commit to something, I mean, really commit to it, it's done. That's it. The behavioral change. Right then and there, the identity, the behaviors, the environments change. Then I have a heightened degree of understanding of how my mind works. So I went to develop it. And through the repetition of practicing it, so, you know, you just pick a goal. You say, put out one video a week on my YouTube channel. Start this project and see it all the way to completion. Go out there and develop this skill. Watch myself develop the skill from a place of flow. I'm committing to it. Done deal. Easier, faster than ever before. I can do it. Now, when a person does this, we always say this, reality rearranges to actually be in harmony and in contribution to someone that has that kind of resolve. 
Now, William Walker Atkinson, in his book, Thought Vibration, refers to this as building up the mind. He says, man can build up his mind and make it what he wills. In fact, we are mind-building every hour of our lives. And I like this perspective, mind-building. Either consciously or unconsciously. Now, we've been saying this, but he's saying it from a different perspective here. He's saying we are mind-building every hour of our lives, either consciously or unconsciously. So if we take it and reflect upon the DILTS model in our environments, in our behaviors, in our capabilities, in our values and beliefs, in our identity, in what we think, imagine, in our vision. He says the majority of us are doing the work unconsciously. But those who have seen a little below the surface of things have taken the matter in hand and have become conscious creators of their own mentality. They're no longer subject to the suggestions and influences of others, but have become masters of themselves. They assert the I and compel obedience from the subordinate mental faculties. The I is the sovereign of the mind, and what we call will is the instrument of the I. Will being the instrument of the I. So a skill, part of this journey, is to develop the ability to imagine yourself or see yourself being that person and then having it express right then and there into our behaviors, environments, capabilities, and so forth. Now, we have a lot of opportunities to practice this. Certainly on the entrepreneurial journey, you'll come across a lot of different aspects of it that may reveal certain programming that is within, certain thinking process, person says, I'm going to sit down and do this task, but for some reason they're procrastinating. Now, William Walker Atkinson actually has some interesting perspectives in relation to I and the mental faculties. So think of a person's identity, values and beliefs, capabilities, behaviors, anything related to the thinking pattern as something that is an effect of what you say I am to. You can say I am to anything. Now, we have the ability to say I am to something, and then that's it. Our behavior has changed. I commit to going to the gym every single day. Done. And it can be like that. However, what we might notice is some kind of internal resistance and stories and different kinds of convoluted thinking. And it's important to not shame ourselves. Just accept that, look, uh, we have been saying I am too, not just the idea of I'm going to go to the gym every day, but everything else that comes along with it, the excuses, the but this, but that. And all we have to do is recognize that we are actually calling upon I and saying I am too, all those things, and start making it clean changing our thinking patterns around, asking ourselves the question, why are we saying if this and but that? Is it really so? Could I really encourage the idea and live in congruence? That's what I believe he's referring to when he says, will is the instrument of the I. So let's look at some key points here. He says, I believe that the mind of man contains the greatest of all forces, that thought is one of the greatest manifestations of energy. Now let's relate that over to the conversation. If a person really thinks and identify with certain thinking, I mean really says, I am this, and just allows themselves to identify with that thought process by just committing to it in their mind, then what happens is everything changes. Environments change, behaviors change, capabilities change. And the changes happen in known ways and unknown ways. Now, I would like this audio to be more suggestive. So just as it was suggested to me by thinking Grow Rich, if you believe that money is a result of hard work alone, perish the thought, as well as it was suggested there are more people around you that you could possibly ever meet in your lifetime. So that way you don't feel isolated and feel that you think so uniquely that 
there's no way that you could find people that you can really resonate with, build a relationship with, have a mastermind with. Just as I was suggested that, let's look at these ideas as suggestions because as we consume this information and we really listen to it and say, well, that could be true for me. Maybe that could be true for me. We'll actually see how that ends up being that way. I know because in my own personal experiences, what I found is as I really believe that uh, when I started to identify with these thought processes such as, you know, as soon as I commit to something, it's done, I'm going to do it. Whether it's I'm going to switch the environment or I commit to a certain behavior, I'm going to commit to a skill, it's done right then and there. If we have any kind of internal resistance, then it's important to recognize that perhaps we've learned that, as he says here, no longer subject to the suggestions and influence of others. Maybe people have different opinions of how it works. What I would like to encourage within you, if it resonates with you, that you would believe it was possible. Because it starts with actually recognizing and believing that it is possible. If you look back to the stories that I shared earlier, it was maintaining a degree of open-mindedness, even if at that time I didn't see any evidence of it. He also says, I believe the man who understands the use of thought force can make of himself practically what he will. Now, normally when we think of will, We might think of something that is a very force-based thing. We might think, okay, I got to force myself to do something. Actually, the way he describes it is as follows, very flow-based. He says, personally, I have a somewhat odd theory about the will, although I don't consider his theory to be odd at all because that's what we're discussing here and that's what we're realizing more so. He says, I believe that every man has potentially a strong will. And that all he has to do is to train his mind to make use of it. And we recognize that it's in thinking. Thinking. What we say I am to, what we identify with, what we associate as far as interpretations, perspectives, ideas, and encourage repetition of the same information or repetition of the same information from different perspectives, such as how you interpret the different things in your environments. Do you see them in contribution and in harmony to your vision, or in conflict. Same is to be said about behavior. Same is to be said about the skills, and so forth. He says, I believe that every man has potentially a strong will, and that all he has to do is to train his mind to make use of it. I think that in the higher regions of the mind of every man is a great store of willpower awaiting his use. The will currently is running along the psychic wires and all that it is necessary to do is to raise the mental trolley pole and bring down the power for your use. And the supply is unlimited for your little storage battery is connected with the great powerhouse of the universal willpower. Now, sometimes we refer to this as divine will aligning human will with divine will. And here's what we find. When you do what you really love to do, when you say, I really can be this person that I really want to be, you'll allow yourself to connect the human will over to the divine will and merge it as one. Then you start to see a congruence here. From vision, the moment you commit to a vision, Everything changes. Beliefs, interpretations change. Could be right away, could be over the course. Skills are cultivated, behaviors change, environments change. We want to start thinking this way because this is really focusing on thinking patterns. The mind is the instrument and the supply of willpower is proportionate to the fineness of the instrument through which it manifests. Let's... uh, go a little deeper into this. He says, I know that the I can and the I will attitude will carry forward to success that will seem miraculous to the man on the I can't plane. Now let's really reflect upon that. The I can't plane. So, 
there are many different planes of existence. And in different planes of existence, we find different interpretations of how we believe ourselves to be and how we believe reality works. The I can't plane can be looked at as a certain identity or a certain view or self-image in which the person is heavily influenced through self-imposed limitation. Keywords, self-imposed limitation. In regards to the word, I can't. I can't. So if a person believes that it's not possible to really live the way they want to live because of X, Y, Z reason, then they will see all kinds of validation and what they would call proof as to the reasons why they can't because can't expresses itself in the outer aspects of life, in the environment, the behaviors, the capabilities. Now, here's the key to it. We don't blame the environment, the behaviors, and the capabilities. We look at our relationship to the skills or capabilities, the behaviors, and our environment. So we're talking about in this video our relationship to, relationship with these attributes. And if we say, look, uh, I can get myself to do something. This increases every day. I'm going to keep this idea into consideration. What will happen? What will happen is you'll start to notice it. You'll start to see it increasing and you'll have different interpretations of how it happened. But I would also suggest that the reason why it really happened was because you finally said, I am to it. You finally committed to it. You said, I am the person that has an idea that I do this behavior. I wake up at five o'clock in the morning or I do whatever it is that you want to do and I just do it. And it becomes easier each day. And wow, what a different world I live in now. Why was it that there was so much complication, inconsistency, lack of congruence, inauthenticity before? And you will find that it was because we were saying, I am, and then adding some but if then in relation to. So it would be something like, go to the gym five days a week and then, but if this happens or if that happens, I won't be able to do it. And all these other things we're saying, I am to that entire sequence. Encourage the idea that you can. And as you go about, encourage the idea that you are that person right now. I am the person that wakes up at five o'clock in the morning. I am the person that goes to the gym five days a week. I am the person. I believe that if we can get our mind connected to incongruence more so every day with our ideal environments, behaviors, capabilities through thinking really, because all that stuff flows by really saying it to ourselves with congruence, we will actually see it happen. Now it may happen overnight. Certainly I've seen it within myself. It can also happen gradually. So we'll start to increase it. So maybe if you say, I'm going to wake up at five o'clock in the morning, and it's not to say that waking up at five o'clock in the morning or whatever is better. It's, I mean, this is really about what do you want to commit to? So let's say you say, I'm going to wake up at five o'clock in the morning. The next morning you actually wake up, you actually do it. I would acknowledge that and say, that's because I said, I am the person that wakes up at five o'clock in the morning. See, this is actually happening. This is proof. This is a form of reaffirmation. When we think of affirmations, we might think of, I am this and I am that. But when we see it in our experience, we can have an inner dialogue about it and then we can further encourage it. Now they actually relate it over to how to develop it. So let's go into act upon your resolution as early and often as possible. As with every manifestation of thought in action, the stronger does it become. You are adding to the strength of your original resolution. Every time you back it up with action. 
we're talking about congruence here. So congruence can be looked at using the logical levels here. Vision, my identity, this is who I am now. And the expression of that is the skills. These are the skills I develop or the behaviors. This is who I am. This is how I behave. This is how I live. This is how I walk. This is how I talk now. Because if you go back here to what James Allen said, Past and future are dreams. Now is a reality. All things are now. All power, all possibility, all action is now. Now, this is a very bold statement. And what it implies is the habit, the congruence of I in relation to anything that you commit to. The practice of doing this develops the ability to consciously put your mind on something and see it all the way to completion. Do it. So here's the thing about it. Why does this benefit us? Well, we talked about in the video that I released last week, flow versus force, that if a person does not allow themselves to really express what they truly want, their goals, their vision, they leave themselves open for drifting. We start to not think for ourselves. And we go back to how we got this programming that made it all complex and convoluted in our own mind again. Can you imagine yourself to be, I trust you can, the person who has a vision and right then and there, you see yourself in the vision and it's done. You start to live like that from this day from the moment you commit to it, in all that you do, in your environments, your behaviors, capabilities, and from there, intuitively so, you know exactly what it is that you do. And there's no hesitation or procrastination or friction in relation to it. Now, that's a wonderful thing. And so he contributes to it by saying, the mind has been likened to a piece of paper that has been folded. Ever afterwards, it has a tendency to fold in the same crease unless we make a new crease or fold when it will follow the last lines. And the creases are habits. Every time we make one, it is so much easier for the mind to fold along the same crease afterward. Let us make our mental creases in the right direction. Now, you know what that direction is. My hunch is it's probably the direction that is in harmony and in contribution to your goals, your visions, your results, what you want to see and achieve and experience in this life. And that is a priority. And you know the way. As mentioned, we always know what the first step is. Now, if a person takes that step, then the next step reveals itself. And as they continue it, they maintain momentum. So... Why is it then we could have challenges when it comes to maintaining the momentum? Why is it that when I read this information back in the days, it didn't just click just like that? Well, the spiritual alchemy process, and I'll put a link in the description of the video that I did on it, but in summary, actually seeing that any kind of uh, incongruence or friction or reactivity or tension, or lack of authenticity that shows up is not something that we have to shame ourselves about, but rather understand what are we saying I am to within. Make peace with it. Say, you know what? That's fine. That was the past. I'm not going to dwell upon it. Now is the time to act. Now is the time to be who I really want to be. What's the thing that I got to do now? Every person has the potentiality of revealing their strong will. We already have it within ourselves. And this universal willpower that he speaks of is inexhaustible. So we do what is being suggested here on the things that we really want to do, our innovation, our creative expression. Because when you do what you really love to do, what you really want to do, what you know that you have to do, you'll find that 
it's easier to do it. And then it becomes a habit. Any kind of friction of thinking that seemed to convolute it starts to taper away, which, by the way, is flow. Because one of the things that we mentioned in flow, which we learned from Mihai Csikszentmihalyi's book, Flow, is distractions, fears, doubt, indecision are excluded out of consciousness. They're just not there in that moment. And just to the repetition of making flow a priority, repetition of doing that thing, it becomes who you are and you automatically express. And then when you commit to something, you'll notice, you'll just do it. You commit to something, you do it. You commit to something and you make it happen. And you no longer overthink. So let's emphasize another point here that he was mentioning in Thought Vibration. He says, He who has developed his mind so that it will allow the willpower to manifest through it has opened up wonderful possibilities for himself. Not only has he found a great power at his command, but he is able to bring into play and use faculties, talents, and abilities of whose existence he has not dreamed. The secret of the will is the magic key which opens all doors. I would agree with this. The way I look at it is will is really a matter of committing to a higher will. Going within yourself and saying, what do you really want? What do you truly desire? What are your goals? What are your vision? Saying, I am that person at that end and commit to it. And then allowing that to express. And if for whatever the reason there seems to be resistance or internal blockages, which is really just thinking. That the thinking is self-imposed limitation in which we're imposing on ourselves, and no need to shame ourselves, simply release from that thinking, associate with ideal thinking. We allow ourselves to express it and we see it in our expressions. If you're an artist, you'll see it in your artwork. If you're a musician, you will see it in your music. If you speak publicly or you're building a business or you're wanting to express a certain way in your relationships or in communication, you will see it. So I trust you found this to be helpful for your journey. I certainly want to encourage this more so within myself because having this kind of congruence between vision and environment or vision and reality is something that stimulates even more so of a flow-based journey to realizing our vision. Now let's go ahead and conclude this with an auto-suggestion to further encourage it. We say, I recognize that I have within myself the connection to universal willpower via my thinking. This will is unlimited and infinite and is there to express whatever I commit to into reality via my behaviors, capabilities, environments. I find it easier each day to allow the automatic expression of this will to flow through me. I see it in my artistic expression, in my communications, in all that I do as I commit to something and automatically see it to completion. Upon reflection, I realize that I understand myself even more so. Self-confidence, self-esteem and a deep level of understanding of who I am is brought to the surface to higher degrees. As a result, I feel a higher degree of inner peace, recognizing that I am expressing the universal storehouse of infinite will through me each moment in the eternal now. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.